Here's the pitch. Some Kid Caster moments of years past. This is the seventh annual Kid Caster contest presented by New York's 529 College Savings Program. And the winner of the honor of being our Kid Caster this year belongs to Dante Sasso. Dante, welcome. Hi. Great, great to have you here. Thanks. How did you uh, how did you win this contest? Um, well, I saw a commercial on one of the games I was watching, and it said to enter. So my mom and I went online, and I wrote an essay and then I got to the audition and during the audition Keith surprised me <laughs> so I did the regular audition and then they called me in for because of quote camera trouble and I was doing it again and when I was finished Keith came around the end of the studio and said you thought you came in for camera trouble but you're the winner wow Keith you're so sly I just happen to be in the neighborhood really <laughs> Well, that's tremendous. I'm, I'm assuming you have been a Met fan. Yeah. And uh, when did you start following the Mets? Who were the first players you watched? Um, it was probably the 2014 All-Star break. I started really getting into baseball. And now I'm like a super baseball fan, and I know like all the teams now. Really? Yeah. And uh, like, who's your favorite player? I like Juan Lagares on the Mets when he's healthy, even though his elbow is troubling him now. And I understand you have a, a sabermetric bent to you. Oh yeah, I do like sabermetrics. Um, so I watch MLB uh, Network, and they have some really good shows that helped me get into sabermetrics and explain the statistics for me. All right. So now Michael Conforto is single to lead off the bottom of the third, and Wilma Flores is coming up, and I will leave the play-by-play -play to you as Michael Conforto gets that base hit to start the inning. It's all yours, Dante Sasso. Take it away. Okay. Well, here's Wilmer Flores, the Mets hero of the last month. And he steps up against Jared Eikhoff. And here's the pitch. Conforto leads off first. And he swings, hits one. Howard gets it. He'll flip to Eikhoff for the first out as Conforto goes to second base. So productive out for the Mets. That's a Gary Cohn line right there. Productive out. Nice. And here comes Bartolo Colon, the heavy hitter. Even though he hasn't finished the season, he's already trumped his hits total of last year, and he's looking to get an RBI here. I like the heavy hitter, by the way, Dante. I Thanks. Heard that. <laughs> I like the trumped. That was that was very timely. <laughs> Here's the pitch from Mike off to Cologne. Conforto off second. And the pitch Cologne swings and misses. A slider on the outside part of the plate. Dante, the key for Cologne is not if he gets a hit, does he keep the helmet on? That's oh, yeah. Key, well, he seems happy when he gets rid of the helmet. <laughs> Here's the one, and he swings and misses again. 0 2 on Cologne. 30 pitches for Eikhoff in this bottom of the third inning with one out. Granderson on deck. He could actually pose a hitting threat. And the pitch to Cologne, he strikes out. So Cologne down on three pitches, and here comes Granderson with a two out RBI opportunity. At least Cologne's helmet stayed on, so that's. Productivity. I'd say he's way, way ahead of the game. Yeah. Well, Better than normal. Curtis Granderson coming up, Dante. He's had a fantastic year from that leadoff slot, hadn't he? Yeah. And he's been hitting a lot of leadoff home runs, and the last minute to do that was Tommy Agee. 
Here's the pitch to Granderson with Conforto on second. And the pitch, he takes it inside, ball one. Good call there, Dante. Uh, Eikhoff, it just continues to pound the strike zone inside. That's why he's been effective here through the third inning. Well, to be a major league pitcher, you got to use the inside part of the strike zone to open up the outside part of the strike zone, and that really helps. Well, you got that right. Very nice. I think you should get a uniform on and become a hitter. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't learn that till my 12th year in the big leagues. Ronnie Dante has clearly been listening <laughs> to your, your stuff. Here's the 2 0 to Granderson, a hitter's count. And the pitch takes it outside 3 0. Granderson loves to swing 3 0. We saw that last year and this year. Would you give him a 3 0 hit sign? Yeah, he's done it and he's been very successful. Okay. Here's the 3 0 to Granderson. And the pitch. Granderson taking ball four. You know, what's you know what's interesting there, Dante, is that you're right. He swings at 3 0 pitches all the time, but he didn't have Yoannis Cespedes behind him. That might change his mind. That's interesting. Well, also. That pitch was kind of pretty outside, and he probably would have taken that in a three and one count or in a two. And one count. Not on Joe West strike zone yesterday. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Yoan Cespedes with two on and two out. No score in the bottom of the third. Ike off at 35 pitches. Yoan steps in. And the pitch. He takes outside one and out. Here comes Rupp out to the mound to have a conversation. Well, we've seen this with Rupp Dante um, when the series in Philadelphia, his pitchers were getting battered around, and he was uh, a real good studying force going out there to talk to his pitchers to try to settle them down because they have so many young starting pitchers now for the Phillies. Well, the Phillies called up all their starting pitchers because right now their season is basically just preparing for their rebuild. And they traded Cole Hamels, they traded Howard and Utley, so, no, not Howard, <laughs> Rollins, sorry. And yeah, Utley, you're right. So their season is essentially salvaged and they're just giving the young players a chance to get their feet wet. Here's the 1 out, and he takes outside. Oh, strike. Yeah. They call one on one assessments. <laughs> Whenever anything happens, Dante, just blame it on the office. On fires. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard of Eric Burns' idea for an automated strike zone? I have heard of that idea. What do you think about that? I like it. The umpires don't lose their jobs. What if your dad was an umpire? Would you like that uh, scenario? Uh, well, all umpires get calls wrong, and it's good to try to make it right. You have replay for calls at for calls on throws and all those things, and why wouldn't you have replay for pitches and strikes? Here's the two one to Cespedes. And the pitch, he swings and fouls one. Well, it would be hard for umpires to call an eight hour game. Because they'd be sitting there and just calling all the strength. Did you have to practice as Murphy's on deck, Duanus Cespedes' name? Uh, not really. It's pretty easy. Wow. Outstanding. Because if you if you get it right the first time, it's continuous. <laughs> but some people pronounce it Cespedes. And, and he swings and misses on the 2-2. Two -two pitch down in the dirt. Curveball from Eikhoff. And there's the side. Dante, that was superb. You've Thanks. obviously been studying very hard, and you did a fantastic job. And um, you know, you can just skip the rest of school and just come work for us now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great job. Thank Thanks. you so Great. much for coming by. Okay. Great job, Dante. That Thanks. away. Way to Keith, go, buddy. Keith, you picked well. Well, 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 well very, done. Very, very nicely nice. done. Well, he's a, he's out in the uh, where Amagansett. Yeah. So he's on the other side of the, the woods. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll give you Keith's address later. Okay, thanks. <laughs>